It's actually said to be spring in Sweden by now. It's uh, mid-March, but we still have like minus uh, five to eight degrees below zero freezing point. So it's um, it's cold night time and it's just below freezing point in daytime. So we are still looking forward to the sunny spring days, but I have actually done pretty much things in my garden by now. So I just wanted to give you a report uh, in March from my home garden. This is, um, well, my vegetable garden. We live in the house just uh, behind the camera, me and uh, my husband and our four kids. So this is the vegetable garden that provides my family with the uh, greens, um, vegetables for the whole year. I think it's amazing. My garden is like 10 years old by now. So I started in 2011 and we live in, um, in southern parts of Sweden. So a long winter just passed and I am so excited, you know, to get started. I have already prepared a few things I'm going to show you. And when we had a look in January and February, I mean, everything was still frozen and not many things have happened, but now it's completely different. Maybe we'll just start over here. This is my, my best area, I would say, because it's, sheltered in a way by the stone wall and a fence made of branches and the best thing may be that um, sun goes up here and then we have sun all day long <laughs> until it finally disappears in that direction so it means that this is a very sunny part of the garden and this area is especially sunny so it's a very good place to start early in the season and here I can see that my cat made some damages <laughs> when we were here in February this was still a very flat area and it's been a flat area where I have grown like uh, artichokes and different flowers and vegetables for the last two years but I simply got a bit tired of that thinking that no I want to like return to the plan with raised beds because it's simply easier to to garden in that way I think so I spent a morning to uh, to prepare for completely new raised beds in a very very easy way I simply like measured this is the size of the bed and then I took um, uh, I, I simply lifted the the soil and put it on top of the bed so I have now the paths here with straw uh, it's easier for me and the kids to know where to put our feet and I made sewings here with uh, sugar snap peas with rocket with um, uh, radishes, carrots, a lot of corn flour in different colors in this bed. And in uh, late summer, then I will uh, sow new carrots in here after the corn flowers are finished. And in this bed, I sowed like um, black salsify and dill in between. Nothing germinated yet, of course, because it's it's way too cold. In here, some of you may remember, I made a live stream in winter where I made a sewing, a winter sewing this bed. It's been cold, we have had snow for uh, months. And now when it thaws, things happen and I am so very pleased about it. This is a, like a mini tunnel and it has like holes in uh, the top of the lid, the top of the tunnel, and um, it's a very good shelter. So what I do is that I make sowings in winter. It's uh, spinach and also pak choy, I think some black kale or something like that. And except some weeds, you now spot the rows where spinach grows and also the, the brassicas.
So I think in my garden it's very, very important to have sheltered places where I can make sowings very, very early in the season to get started. I think for many beginners you may aim for like a flat area where you create your vegetable garden and every spot in that area is completely the same. But in my garden, my lucky star is that I have the small spaces that I can actually shelter and protect from wind and from rain and from snow, etc., where things germinate very early. So this is one of the places. And over here, I have another one. This is spinach. And I also spot some, oh, they are so tiny. <laughs> I think it's like a red lettuce. I have here, you may spot the things over here. And this is a mix of different uh, varieties of pak choy. And the soil is actually not that cold. It's very interesting. We live in a quite a cold climate everywhere here. <laughs> There are brassicas germinating. It's amazing. So let's see what comes up in a few weeks. This may not look that good, I admit, but it's easier for me to have those like very easy solutions for things instead of building myself a, a very good looking uh, greenhouse or whatever in this place. So I'm very happy about this. Oh, here, look, rhubarbs. I then have to put, um, I usually put, uh, you know, a bucket on top of it to, to start the, um, the rhubarb, to force them to, to grow early. Let's move on to a few other places here. So palette color. Two pallet colors here are going to be places where my youngest kids are going to grow. This year they will have one each. But uh, before that, <laughs> I am growing radishes. I think radishes are like spring tomatoes in my family. We eat plenty of radishes. And you know, we, I grow the radishes, um, the small radishes that uh, grows very fast. It's not like turnips or um, the other Asian varieties of radishes but uh, this is a, a very good start in spring to to get uh, an early harvest of quite a big not a root but you know it's, it's a really nice vegetable now let's move on to the really nice parts i have made a um, hotbed and you know when i do things in my garden i tend to go for the big projects i really like big projects <laughs> so this is my hotbed and it's like, one, two, three, it's nearly four meters long. And I made it from horse manure that I collected. Uh, and I made it this big simply because we are just finishing up on another book. It's my seventh book from this garden. And it's about how to grow like in a sustainable way, how to produce food in lots and lots of food in a sustainable way. And I think this is a very good example on how you can actually well, produce lots of food early in the season. So, do you want to have a look inside? <laughs> this is my like mom's entertainment <laughs> to go out to check my um, my hotbed. And now you 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 do not feel the cold, right? But it's it's really really cold in nighttime in Sweden right now. But still, I have all these vegetables. Are you ready? I haven't yet started to harvest. And that's simply because it's uh, Tuesday today. And Thursday, I will have um, a team from the National TV. Uh, coming to make, uh, well, a thing in my garden. So I wanted to save the har first harvest so that they can have nice pictures. This is one of um, my favorite lettuces. 
and it's uh, called Frilisi. It's a mix between like a, a, like a picking lettuce and the iceberg lettuce. Uh, this is um, a kale, um, Russian kale. I love the form of the leaves and it's very tender in taste. It's super. Here we have the little gem lettuce. I think it will start to flower. And you can see that because the stem is really tall. It's not supposed to look this way. I was a bit late by planting it, so. A leek. <laughs> see how it's doing. Um, black kale and um, pak choy, lady choy, I think, with red leaves, parsley and some lettuce. More leaves. <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot, or my husband forgot, <laughs> to um, remove the blankets. You know, in nighttime, I have to have blankets on top to protect it from the cold. And if I forget to remove the blankets in daytime, the plants will not get uh, enough light. And then you will have the very tall stem. This is a radish and it's it's not a, a good looking radish that the stem is too tall so it's not useful but you can eat it of course like this but i will make a new sewing so crispy and tasty lovely um spring onion lettuce the chinese broccoli komasuna more parsley with a few frost damages because the lid was not on like correctly one night so Things like that happened. <laughs> and in the last box I have more sowings. And as you can see, they are also very tall. Here you can see the, the temperature. So it's 40 degrees Celsius inside this hotbed. And that's why it grows really good. So we have the spinach, we have dill, a few other leafy greens, rocket. I really like to make hotbeds, but I also experiment with um, you know, the overwintering leafy greens, because sometimes it's more successful actually to overwinter hardy vegetables in my polytunnel than actually do the, the heavy work with creating a hotbed. So it's, it's kind of similar. The years when I have had very much like um, overwintered plants in the polytunnel, I can then harvest earlier than I can do in the hotbed with less work. And that's important, of course. So I'm very happy about this. And of course, one thing with this is, I mean, I get to see new green plants, uh, sowings germinating, and I, you know, I get very excited about this. It's like a drug for me to see this. So. I simply love to have this in my garden and it gives me like a reason to go out. Uh, after I have left the kids at school, I always go out here and I check the, the hotbed or the plants in the polytunnel. <laughs> um, well, you may wonder what this is. When I was to prepare the hotbed, I ordered a lot of straw. So I had, had like a, a huge bale of straw. I didn't use all of it, of course, so I thought, well, why not try this straw bale gardening thing that I have read about for 10 years, but never done it myself. So this is my version of straw bale garden, but it's, it's simply a lot of straw. Um, and um, what I uh, didn't notice about the, the, the bale that I uh, ordered was that it was like sliced into smaller pieces. So it was not that easy to form this very like well shaped straw bale bed, but I made my best. So what I do now is I simply pee on my potty to collect a whole lot of pee. This may sound disgusting for some of you, but this is how it works. Because this is simply just straw. And it's not very, you know, it doesn't consist of very nutrition uh, in this one. It's no manure. So you have to add that. So you simply water it with lots of um, pee. 
to get started with the process where this thing is like heated up. <laughs> See how it ends up. I don't. I'm not sure, but it's a nice thing to to try. Simply because uh, I think I mentioned the the trees that grows just close to the to this garden, and they have their roots all over the place. So this year it suits me quite good to simply grow and build on top of the ground where the roots cannot damage my vegetables. You have to have, you know, projects. You have to try new things. It will give you plenty of nice knowledge. So this is what I aim for in this place. Last time when I checked under the straw here, I didn't see anything. I am looking for the first signs of the garlic and here it is. This is a bit late in my garden but we have had a cold winter and I, I put the, um, the cloves in the ground quite late also. Some people ask me why I cover the bed with... Um, usually I, I have leaves on top but in this case I had some straw so I simply used that. So why do I put it on top and that is simply because in winter in, in my part of Sweden it's very cold and then comes another week where it's like above zero freezing point. So what happens then when it freezes and thaw repeatedly is that the garlic sort of press itself up through the ground when it frees, when the, the soil is very light. So that means that uh, the garlic is exposed to very cold temperatures and the risk is um, a bit bigger that it will be damaged. So I have noticed that if I put like a very thin layer of like leaves or straw, it will then sort of make the, the temperatures uh, a bit e more even than if I don't use this layer of mulch on top. My beds in this area and the one behind me are six meters tall and I think it's a very good size for me in my garden. I have actually <laughs> done another thing over here and this is a bed for spinach. And this shows pretty good what I sometimes talk about. And I have simply just sprinkled the seeds on top of the surface and just scratched it and flattened the, the soil. It's, it's very cold outside, but the ground is, is not very, very cold. And as you can see here, the tiny sprouts here are spinach and they germinate all over the place. I have this fabric on top just to protect from the very coldest temperatures and snow, etc. And it also keeps my cat from not scratching in the ground here. It's very important. And I think sewing like this is, is it's so important for me to be able to show this because you have to see this with your own eyes before you get to understand how it works in real. Uh, I have so many readers saying that it sounds impossible, it's not working, etc, etc. But if you do this at home, make a sowing of spinach and you actually see it germinate in winter, it's still winter. And then you may have an idea on how to use this in your garden to produce food. So I can repeat that. You know, spinach grows when it's only 4 degrees Celsius in the ground. It's still very cold then, but it still grows. And if I have sown spinach then in winter and it germinates now in, in mid-March, I will have lots and lots of food to harvest. Uh, I can start harvest this bed probably in April with tiny leaves, the baby leaves. And then in May I can harvest, let's say, uh, two to four kilos of spinach for my freezer. 
and that's how I grow a lot of food early in the season. I haven't done anything here. <laughs> Not a single thing. Well, I have one thing. I have harvested. Let me show you. I just love this. This is a, it's like a storage place. You see, I have food in here. Let's see if I can find any. Can you guess before what this is? So this fantastic vegetable is Jerusalem artichokes. And there are several varieties of Jerusalem artichoke. I grow, I think, four of them in my two gardens. I love them. Most people in Sweden, they grow them as like a perennial. So they put them in the ground and let them spread all over the place. I hate when Jerusalem artichokes uh, spread, so I don't want that. What I do is I plant them in uh, spring and then I let them grow and I harvest next spring. So I don't use it like in fall time because then we have plenty of other root vegetables. But in spring, like now, our storage places for potatoes may be empty. And then it's just like a treasure to dig up the Jerusalem artichoke. And I use it basically like potatoes too. Uh, mashed uh, Jerusalem artichokes, I bake them in the oven, I make a uh, soup, etc. etc. So it's, it's a really, really nice uh, root vegetable to use. So by this time of the year, I harvest, I dig up all the Jerusalem artichoke and I save a few of them that looks nice like this and I replant them but in another space uh, in the garden. I have not yet figured out where to plant them this year but yeah so this will make a pretty good dinner for my family. This is a peach tree. I think we have had two difficult spring for peach trees and also the apricot trees that I have, both out in the main vegetable garden and also in my polytunnels. They, they have lots of flower buds, but we have had so cold springs, so they just freeze. I showed you the honeyberries, I think, and now you can see they start to show their leaves here have buds and here we see the flower buds as well they flower very early in um, in my garden so just now when the air is a bit warmer it will start to flower and then in may you can see the first berries and this is the bushes are very very popular uh, among the bees we have one beehive I grow lots of different varieties. I love them. Oh, check the chives. I have so much weeds in this area. I think I, I will have to dig up the chive and then just clear this mess. It's a bit tricky here because I have the asparagus here and I can't dig up this, is it called coach grass I think? It spreads in a horrible way. Let's go check the palette colors. I have prepared one, two, three, four, five, six out of eight palette colors. So they are now ready to plant or sow. I think I'm going to, to put plants in here and uh, I'll go for summer flowers. I simply put uh, horse manure because I had that underneath and then some soil on top. And my, my way to do this is that I simply dig out half of this and I put the soil in this half and I fill up with like manure or bokashi compost or something else that will uh, feed uh, the soil. And then I put this layer of soil on top back and then I make, um, this, I do the same with this part. When I have grown in a palette color, like for one season, the, the ground level for the soil seems to like sink a bit and it shows in this palette color. So this was like filled up to this point with just compost. 
but then after a season or a season and a half it sinks so I have to fill up with new material. I hardly use like the finished compost to fill up a place like this. I can have better use for that in other places so I, I simply use like leaves and uh, garden waste. <laughs> I dump it in here and I cover it with new soil. So it's, it's a very good way to create a healthy place for my plants. Do you want to have a look as well in my flower area? <laughs> I find like signs of my children all over the place. A good, a good sword to point at things. So what happened uh, the last couple of weeks is that my tulips are starting to show. Look at this. I grow the tulips here only like for cutting. Uh, so I don't going to, uh, I'm not going to keep it. There are a few other things starting to show, but this place will not look that stunning this year because it will take a while for the perennial plants to establish and to grow. They are going to look a bit tiny this year. This part here is the peony bed with lots of peonies and I have lilies in this space just in front of the peonies. They are starting to show now. The, they are actually a few years old because I have moved them here. So let's see if I can just put some of them in, in a vase. I am thinking now because I really want to show you the polytunnel. <laughs> we'll just go down to the polytunnel and end this video in there. It's a bit messy in here, but this is my like playground. I love it in here, absolutely love it because when you open the door, it's warm. And it's like, here it's spring and you know, there are buds on my blueberries and my peaches and the tulips are growing, my spinach is growing, my brassicas is growing, everything is growing. So it's winter outside and it's uh, nearly summer in here. I am so excited about all the tulips I'm growing this year. I have so many things to learn about tulips and uh, I am really looking forward to it, but I hope I will not like lose too many while learning. Other things in my garden I am more comfortable with, you know, growing. I have grown them for several years and I have really put an effort in learning how to grow them as well. And one of uh, the questions I had from my YouTube community or the comments in YouTube videos are about the fact that I seem to grow the same kind of like varieties or vegetables in many different places in my garden. How come? And I grow in a cold climate, so for me it's very important to make sure that I have things to harvest in like a long period of time. And now when it's spring, things germinate very fast, like here in my polytunnel. It's uh, 20 degrees Celsius right now and it's, well, it may freeze when it's very, very cold outside, but the risk is not that big as it is out in the main kitchen garden. So if I make sowings or I plant things in here, let's say the spinach over here, for example, it's overwintered. So I have the overwintered spinach. I can harvest this in just like say two weeks. And after that, I have this spinach. <laughs> Uh, to harvest a bit later and after that is finished I can go for the spinach out in the main kitchen garden. So I have the, um, the vegetables in different places to sort of increase my harvest. Easy as that. So if I, if I only grew spinach out in the main kitchen garden I could harvest spinach for let's say two weeks, three weeks or so. But by overwintering, make new winter sowings in the polytunnel, winter sowings in the main kitchen garden, spring sowings in the main kitchen garden, in different places, will increase the harvest and get me more food uh, in this area. So it's, it's very, very useful to think like that. And of course, this is because this area is warmed up um, much quicker in springtime than the area in the main kitchen garden where it's nearly like 
frozen still. So you have to think very smart when you plan your your garden to get a lot of food. And I think this is a is a very good way to to think when I make sowings. So it's not. I admit it doesn't look like this professional maybe, but you have other options I think in in a home garden where you can play around a bit to get more food. Uh, you don't have to have an income from like selling your vegetables etc. The most important thing is actually you have something to eat and I do all year round and that's the most important thing for me. I think we have to finish here. I can talk forever and ever about each and every <laughs> uh, vegetable that I grow but um, I know that you are curious about the polytunnel so maybe we'll just start in here in April and let's pray for the tulips that I can maybe harvest some tulips for you. Thank you for following me around in the garden. I appreciate your comments and all the views uh, when you check my videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you have a great March in your gardens too. Bye for now.